Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hello, welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hi. <laughs> oh, you said hello. I'm saying hi. Um, we have a, a video that um, we're really excited to check out here in just a moment. But before we do that, as we do to you every time, and it's annoying and we're sorry, but it's just the way that YouTube does its thing. If you don't mind and you enjoy our content and you're here, hit that like button. And also consider subscribing. It's free. Now, this weekend happens to be our wedding anniversary. We have been together for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And married for, for a, a few of those. Wait, no, hold on. What? <laughs> what was that answer? Uh, mass is, um, yeah. Hmm. 12 years. 12 years. <laughs> I'm like counting my fingers. <laughs> Thanks for the save yeah, there. This will be 12 years on Sunday. Anyway, in celebration of our anniversary, we have a, an exciting video for you guys. You're gonna like this Do one. Do not miss it. You're gonna like it. I don't know if I'd call it exciting, um, but interesting, fun, entertaining. Um, now, we're not gonna be here, and actually, we're not here now. We're recording this early. We're somewhere else in America, or are we? We might be somewhere else altogether, but mm. we're not in uh, like that side of the world. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking now. But um, hey, happy early anniversary. Well, happy early anniversary to you. Why, thank you. And uh, if anyone else is having anniversaries or birthdays, all that stuff to you too. Okay, <laughs> enough of that weirdness. Today, we're going to check out something that's been asked of us to do for like two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're finally going to do it. And what is that video? It is Fly with RAF's Quick Reaction Alert Cruise. Okay, so I'm excited about this one. It's been talked about a lot in the comments section, but as we do before we do every video that has anything to do with anything military, first and foremost, if we have anyone watching that are active duty or veterans, thank you for your service. Thank you, thank you. And if you haven't done it yet, my personal challenge to anyone watching, think a veteran. You'll feel good, and so will they. Mm -hmm. All right, so without any further ado, I wanted to check this out for a while now. This is eight years old. Wow, I did not know that. Um, the quick reaction alert crew is this is, I hope this isn't too much cockpit stuff and make me all know, dizzy. Actually, I'm fine. actually nervous. That's probably why we <laughs> haven't done it. Now that I come to think of it, I have vertigo. So I could never be one of these people, but we're going to see. And hopefully I won't be vomiting during this video. The That's Eurofighter cool. Typhoon. One of the most advanced fighter jets in the world armed and ready. The pilots set to scramble at a moment's notice to defend the country on the orders of the British government. This is what order I've been given. This is my job. I am the weapons platform. Okay. For the first time, cameras have been allowed to you film too? every yeah. stage of this vital part of national security. The worst case scenario is that we potentially have to shoot down uh, an aircraft. We have yeah. scrambled to QRA jets. We have been inside the UK's top secret nuclear bunker and heard from the pilots themselves and the politicians who would give them the order to shoot down a plane. Uh. We were a hostile aircraft. That's quite threatening. Yes, it is. In a matter of seconds, the sky defenders of the United Kingdom are away on what has now become a routine job, shooting down Nazis. Wow. Just as we were ready in 1940 for the Nazi aircraft coming across the southeast of England, then we're ready now. This is the story of how the RAF protects Britain's skies every minute of every day. Can you see that? Definitely. Can you see the goosebumps and the hair standing on my arms? I've got them too. I got hairy arms. <laughs> That's all you're going to get from this video now, isn't it? It's actually it's got hairy arms. hairy arms. No, seriously, like I have got goosebumps. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh. Okay, this is awesome. Bang. RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire is Lincolnshire. home to two frontline typhoon squadrons. 30 combat jets are based here. They are flown by 40 pilots and supported by 400 ground crews. Dang. 
Look at that. They have many roles, but the one that never ends for them is a mission known as QRA. It stands for Quick Reaction Alert. Uh -huh. The RAF's operation to protect the skies of Britain. And they would take, they do. On a discreet part of RAF Coningsby is a building nicknamed the Q Shed. It sits between two hangars. Inside okay. each one is an aircraft loaded with fuel and missiles ready, go. ready to take off day or night. Wow. Let them do the, full the pilots take it in turns on the QRA rotor. Each shift lasts 24 hours. They don't want us to broadcast their surnames for their own personal security. Well, yeah. Just tell me what it's like, the, sort of the, the feelings when you're on shift and you're fairly tense because you don't know when that's going to crack on. Yeah, indeed. You can't, you can't think about it too much um, because otherwise you, your mind wouldn't be in the right place when, when you got the shout. Um, obviously, you've always got an ear on ear on anything that, that can that can have the shout you know <clears throat> i've had moments in my life where i thought i'm cool like here and there not many believe me well, very few like i could count them like once maybe i don't know but i'll never be cool to have my name under typhoon fighter pilot cool mm -hmm. that's just cool sorry it is it is cool um obviously you've always got an ear on ear on anything that that can that can happen on shift, the Q shed becomes home. There are okay. bedrooms so they can sleep overnight, but on duty, their senses never fully switch off. Looking Mark at. is coming to the end of his first shift, and it's been a quiet one. This is your first QRA? Yeah. What sort of feeling of responsibility do you have? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a huge feeling of responsibility. Um, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to kind of, kind of live uh, fulfill the training that we've carried out for such a long period of time. Um, but yeah, there certainly is a, a, a weight of responsibility, yeah. Why is it important for you to be doing this job? I think it's, a, as John said before, I think it's a real privilege um, to be in this position to protect the country as a whole. See, right there, that's what I'm talking about. He said it's a privilege mm -hmm. to be able to protect this country as a whole. Exactly. And that is putting, that's a man putting his life on the line. Mm -hmm. Should that come to that? Exactly. And he says it's a privilege. And this is why, you know, it's such a big deal for me and for you, I know, mm -hmm. to say thank you for your service to those that we know that have served or are serving. Because that is just a whole different type of person, a whole different type of human being. Definitely. You know, not all of us are capable of it. And um, wow, he, he just gave me to goosebumps even more. That, that's, that's and to amazing. say it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. God bless you, sir. It's been a gentle introduction to QRA for Mark. Not every shift, though, is as quiet as this one. I'm sure it's not. On average, 8,000 aircraft enter British airspace every single day. This animation shows the actual route of each plane during one typical 24-hour period last year. Whether they're landing, taking off, or just passing overhead, each aircraft must be closely monitored. It, it is quite a challenge, um, mm -hmm. but our training um, and, and the practicing and the simulation that we do in terms of our operations uh, are fundamental to making sure that we achieve the tasks that we are assigned to do. We're identifying aircraft every day and we're looking for every aircraft that comes into the UK to understand where it's going, what it's doing. Um, but, but on occasions, um, on a daily basis, there are uh, instances where we are unsure of what the aircraft is doing or it might be in a different place to where we were expecting it or a different time. Okay. See that happening. The British military has two air control and reporting centres, CRCs. One based at RAF Bulma in Northumberland, and this one at RAF. I'm surprised there's only two, actually. Uh -huh. I bet they're massive, but still, I'm surprised that there's not a couple more than that, at mm -hmm. least. Just a little shock. Gampton in Lincolnshire. Just a few miles to the west of the Typhoon Station at RAF Coningsby. For security reasons, the various parts of the QRA operation are kept in different locations in case of attack. Smart. Their job here is to identify suspicious activity. They are looking for abnormal behavior, unusual flight paths, loss of communication, unidentified aircraft. As we are filming, 
an alert goes off. OK, what we've got is we've had a uh, call on the guard radio. The guard radio is where every aircraft within the UK listens to that radio, with air traffic going out for a, an aircraft who's not speaking to anyone at the moment. Every single aircraft in the UK? Every aircraft will listen in to guard, the guard radio so that actually if they need to be contacted, they can be contacted. In this particular instance, um, uh, an aircraft has got airborne out of Marham. Um, um, we believe it to have a, a, a stuck trunk, uh, receiver, which means he can't hear. Um, but we have not had him check in, so they've gone on guard radio to try and contact him to establish two-way communications with him and therefore be able to identify him and confirm which aircraft it is. Huh. It turns out to be a US Air Force plane with radio problems. Sorry about Nothing that. Nothing to worry about. The Typhoon <sighs> crews are stood down. We have two main uh, missions in respect of uh, quick reaction and alert. One is uh, against um, military aircraft um, and Russian aircraft. Um, and the other one is very much a UK-centric 9-11 um, type scenario. Mm. This is a Russian yeah. Bear aircraft. It's a long-range Tupolev bomber. Dang. Recently, Vladimir Putin has been using them to challenge NATO's response. How do you assess that current ge geopolitical situation with the Russians? Uh, well, uh, the first question is, uh, you know, go and speak to Mr Putin and see what his intentions are. But I think the important thing from my viewpoint, we have a responsibility as, as a NATO member, uh, firstly to reassure uh, those uh, member states that are much closer to any potential Russian threat than ourselves, that we are here, that uh, NATO is uh, fit for purpose, and of course to deter, um, as part of NATO, any uh, potential aggressors uh, to the organisation and the countries within it. Only last Thursday, two RAF typhoons were scrambled from Lossiemouth in Scotland to intercept a Russian blackjack strategic bomber that is capable of flying supersonic. I don't remind myself this is an eight-year-old video. Russian planes exactly. don't submit a flight plan or transmit their position. <clears throat> they never actually enter British airspace, but fly into the British area of interest mm. to test the RAF's reactions. Yeah, They're doing their scary. job um, and uh, we're <coughs> doing our job to determine what is happening and then feed that back to the uh, fighter controllers and well done. further up the chain. In April 2015, a Russian bear bomber flew up the English Channel straight through busy commercial flight paths. Really? This is video of that incident, oh. filmed from inside the Russian plane. The RAF typhoons shadowing it alongside. This kind of flying is it's extremely intimidatory. It's also dangerous. Um, they may not enter our airspace, yeah. but uh, they don't respond. They don't file flight plans. They don't respond to not air cool. traffic control. They don't even respond to our pilots when they're up in the air. Uh, Can you imagine no. like that, an incident like that happening? And you're the one that has to decide what are you do, what are you going to do about it? No. <clears throat> Let That's alone. why I don't like responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone being one of the pilots that has to go up there and fly alongside of them, like. And try to intimidate. You gotta them wait. You gotta wait for your orders. It. Of course you do. But mm. wow, uh -huh. it's tense. Alongside them, it's unnecessary behavior. It's intimidatory. It's designed they still do to, that? Uh, uh, to annoy us. But uh, it's important we respond to it, and we do. In a matter of seconds, the sky defenders of the United Kingdom are away on what has now become a routine job: shooting down Nazis. Seventy-five years ago, the men and women of the RAF were performing a very similar role but against a very different enemy. Goering's Luftwaffe took its first licking. In 1940, the German Luftwaffe was bombing airfields across the southeast of England. The only thing that stood in their way were the hurricanes and spitfires of fighter command. It was the Battle of Britain. Well, this is wow. rather a large part of British history. Yeah, it is. If it wasn't for the replica hurricane and a Spitfire as well, you wouldn't know it's here. You could almost walk straight past it. Because 76 stairs below here is a World War II underground operations room, what? which was the command wow. center for the Battle of Britain. Wow. During those tense days, this bunker at RAF Uxbridge was manned round the clock as wow. the Nazis pummeled the airfields Look in the that. southeast. Key decisions <clears throat> that would decide the fate of Europe were taken here, 60 feet underground. It's extraordinary to think that just 70 years ago, this was very much the height of technology. 
Yeah. And try and imagine what it must have been like during those days. There would have been 20 people crowded around this table, all of them Jeez. women, working in pairs, plotting the route of German aircraft as they came across the English Channel. One RAF officer said it was like a game of tennis. The Germans were always serving. The RAF were the ones returning. And on that day, that crucial day, as if to add to the pressure, Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister, was up here watching down and he saw on the board behind all of the lights turn red, meaning that every single Spitfire and Hurricane Squadron was up in the air engaging the Germans. Oh dear and he Lord. turned to the man in charge and said, how much have we got in reserve? The answer came back, none. Ah. Fighter command was vastly outnumbered. The Luftwaffe came at them with over 3,000 aircraft. The Allies only had 600 in the beginning. The oh, wow. fighter command lost 103 pilots killed, 128 seriously injured. Uh, the lifeblood of fighter command, its fighter pilots, was ebbing away. Um, and so we were in a pretty serious state. Uh, we had pilots. We didn't have combat trained pilots. And pilots were arriving at frontline squadrons, if they were lucky, with 20 hours of experience on a Hurricane or a Spitfire. Some with 15, some with 10, some with none at all. Wow. The Hurricane might have shot down more planes in the battle, but the Spitfire has become a British icon. No, no, no. Well, this is no, not just a British icon, an icon in our home, too. Mm -hmm. The Spitfire was epic. Yes. Epic. Yeah, it was. I'm sorry, I had to say that. That This has all got me, like, I didn't expect to get this part of this, uh -huh. too. I wasn't expecting this. I'm glad we're getting it. Though. Yeah, it's a lot, but, um, man... Um, I, I, I don't have words for that. It wouldn't, it would just, yeah, mm -hmm. cheapen it. The last remaining airworthy Spitfire to really? have fought in the Battle of Britain. And the really? RAF bought it for £25 off a scrap heap back in 1948. Would you believe it? It's not particularly comfortable, I have to say, and to imagine that these young men would go up in it four or five times a day to face the Germans <sighs> over the English Channel is, is quite something. Today, the home of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight is RAF Coningsby. The planes that defended Britain's skies 75 years ago now live alongside their modern successes. That's cool. The Typhoons. There are a few RAF pilots who get to fly both. Oh, that's neat. Nice. is Coningsby's station commander, Group Captain Jez Attridge. These old aeroplanes, you can really feel them. You know, you're... There's not much to them. It's you and the stick. Whereas the modern aeroplanes, it's all about That's processing right. the information rather than actually flying the aeroplane. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting there as a battle space manager rather than a pure pilot. That's, that's cool though, I'm sorry. Like the Spitfire and the Hurricane, the Typhoon was designed for a dogfight. It was built to shoot down the enemy. Don't mess with the RAF. From their Lincolnshire base, they can be over central London in just 10 minutes. Oh, wow. When the alarm goes, there is no time for a briefing. Mm. Coming up, the siren Lion. sounds. Yep. You're right. The siren goes off and we need to be out of those aircraft as soon as possible. The training just kicks in and the adrenaline flows. And we experience firsthand what it is like to be intercepted at 35,000 feet. When you did not respond immediately to my orders at 13, you will be shot down. Oh, we're doing a simulation? Like a... How cool. Uh, I'm scared. During the later years of the Cold War, when the Russian nuclear threat was at its height, the British government built this bunker at RAF Air Command outside High Wycombe in Buckinghamshire. Okay. It is so top secret that this is the first time cameras have been allowed to film it. Three sets of blast doors protect it from nuclear, biological and chemical attack. Smart. There are four floors going deep below the ground. Wow. On the second, somewhere in the heart of the bunker, is the National Air Defence Operations Centre, okay. the NADOC. The top of the military chain to protect Britain's skies. Michael, this is the huh. FC for the NAT rep. We still have no radio contact. With the role of the NADOC is to act very much as the hub, the fusion point, if you want, for, for all the information that comes in to allow us to exercise air defence on behalf of the United Kingdom Air Defence Command. Just work. We've got a lost comms on a call sign. If a suspicious aircraft appears, there is a direct line from here to the Department of Transport and the Metropolitan Police Counter-Terror Unit. OK. They can swap intelligence to build a clearer picture of the threat. 
in real emergencies, a red phone connects straight to Downing Street. When oh. dialed, a voice answers with one simple word, London. It is then transferred to the Prime Minister or to a senior cabinet minister if he is away. Imagine when the phone rings, even during an exercise, the heart beats a little faster. Yes, you know, there are, there are lives at stake, there are uncertainties, you're unsure as to whether how real the threat uh, is, mm -hmm. and uh, there's advice available to you, but in the end, uh, a minister has to take that decision. The QRA operation is highly sensitive. It has never been filmed before from start to finish, but the RAF gave us unprecedented access to do just that. Why am I acting surprised? That's what the title of this video was, but I didn't, mm. I don't know. I'm, I think I'm ready for this. <clears throat> okay. It's kind of exciting. I'm, I'm privileged to be able to watch this. Yeah. This has not been filmed before and yeah. know, to see a little bit of what's going on <sighs> and what they go through. Hit that like button for the military. Okay. This is how it works. Oh, good Lord. Buckle up, buttercup. We flew out of RAF Coningsby to play the part of a hijacked passenger plane. Okay. So we've That's been okay. heading east over the North Sea. We're about there at the moment. And in a minute, we're going to turn around. We're going to start coming back down towards the UK, but this time as an unidentified aircraft, at which point the alarm bells will start ringing. The typhoons based here in Coningsby will be scrambled, and they will come out, sit alongside us, and intercept us. At RAF Scampton, our aircraft is identified on the computer screens. Jack of interest, East Coast inbound. They immediately contact the NADOC in the bunker at RAF Air Command. Nat Rep, good morning, sir. This is the Master Controller. I have a track of interest in the system for you. Zulu Zulu 001. He's East Coast heading northwest right now at 35,000 feet. Yeah, I can see it on your radar. Roger, that's understood. I will be. Quick reaction alert to readiness. Stand by. The master controller at Scampton alerts the typhoons. Coningsby Operations and QRA. This is the Black Dog Master Controller. Acknowledge. QRA. Q on. Four quick reaction alerts. Scramble, scramble, scramble. Acknowledge. QRA. The two pilots and their ground teams run to the hangars. They can flick a switch to begin powering up the jet, even as they climb into the cockpit. The typhoons are cleared to take off. We have scrambled two QRA jets to intercept this lost comms zone. One jet has been cleared to the Climb flight level four, one zero and four zero zero. Set speed initially decimal at nine. Your mission interrogate. Mission interrogate. As they break through the clouds, there any other information that we got on this aircraft? the team on the ground are still trying to gather intelligence on the suspect aircraft. He's still out of radio contact with air traffic control. The typhoons need to reach it fast and assess the situation for themselves. The quicker they get there, the more thinking time for the Prime Minister if he is called upon to make a decision. And it can happen. We start with uh, breaking news tonight as a Russian-built Latvian cargo plane has been intercepted by RAF typhoons and escorted into Stansted Airport. The military... In October 2014, the typhoons from RAF Coningsby flew supersonic to intercept a Latvian aircraft approaching London. It wasn't communicating, and so the RAF pilot gave this final warning. 1605 from the Lima 9 Tango 47. I'm instructed by Her Majesty's Government of the United Kingdom to warn you that if you do not respond immediately to my orders, you will be shot down. Okay. Wow. Mm hmm. Ah, could you imagine hearing that? No. Or let alone having to say that? Either thing. Not good. Yeah, and anyone involved in that would have been. Ha! Ah, that's real, right? That was a real. Oh that was my real. goodness. The warning is that if you do not respond immediately to my orders, you will be shot down. The cargo plane was safely escorted into Stansted. 
It is one of the UK's designated airports for terrorist incidents. Okay. The people in the cockpit, the people communicating with the cockpit uh, are fully trained, fully rehearsed and ready for that moment. Back at RAF Coningsby, even as the two typhoons are closing in on our target aircraft, new jets are being readied should another call come in. Oh, wow. Okay. The pilot inspects the weapons and does his pre-flight checks in the cockpit. If the sirens sound, everything must be ready to go. Although there is another QRA base at RAF Lossiemouth in Scotland, okay. Coningsby must be set to launch any time of day or night, even if some of its aircraft are already deployed. Yeah. That makes sense. It's caught, 30, it's the same feet way though. above the North Sea, the it? typhoons are closing in on our aircraft. They approach cautiously in case they spook the plane. And then they try to contact the cockpit. Russian 66 from Q2, interceptor aircraft. Our aircraft doesn't respond. A Q2 uh -huh. It's remarkable how close they get. There's one either side of us at the moment, both fully armed. If you were a hostile aircraft, that's quite threatening. Yes, and I was just going to say, I am never going to have the ability to be like that guy. Even though it's a training thing. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope. I would need a new pair of pants. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. Looking out the window, even if I'm out in the training exercise, like... Nah. Look over and see that? No. Nope. Mm -mm. No, gosh. I'm like, nervous for him. Yet this video is out there, so clearly nothing happened. Right. And then we would have heard that on the news, right? But I'm still like, <laughs> I'm freaking out. Look at where I paused that. That's just... Mm -hmm. Holy crap, guys. A hostile aircraft. That's quite threatening. Very threatening. The typhoon Very pilots will report what they're seeing back to the ground and in turn receive any new intelligence. That's good. Heading on to east immediately. Uh, so that they can stay on station for as long as needed, a refueling tanker is deployed. I love watching that. They will that. be getting um, communications from the control and reporting centres at Scampton and, and Bulmer. They'll be giving us instructions um, as more information is fed to them and they gain more information from, from other sources. And then gradually there's an escalation process if that needs to occur. There's nothing new in there that we don't practice and okay. the training just kicks in and the adrenaline, the adrenaline flows. Imagine it would. Having no luck with radio contact, the Typhoon pilots fire flares as a show of force. By now, most options have been scary. tried and our plane... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't know if you guys can hear it. Hopefully you can't, but it's storming here right now. Hmm. It just started thundering. Yes, and it just started thundering right, about right when he just did that. And I'm already sitting here going, ah, I get a little nervous, and it's like... But those flares would be scary, too. I wouldn't know they're flares. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't care. If I see fire in a sky, I'm going, okay, <laughs> where's done. the parachute? Oh my goodness. I'm watching that back though. Having no luck with radio contact, the typhoon pilots fire flares as a show of force. By now, most options have been tried and our plane is still not responding. Yeah, it has become a real threat to national security. Yes, yeah, stop. I have by Her Majesty's government of the United Kingdom to warn you that if you do not respond immediately to my orders to turn east, you will be shot down. It is probable that were this happening for real, the Prime Minister or a senior cabinet member would now be on the line they would. and briefed. Absolutely the worst case they would. scenario is that we potentially have to shoot down uh, an aircraft but that's having gone through the most robust processes and procedures in order to identify and interrogate that aircraft. Mm -hmm. And who would make that decision? That Prime decision Minister. is held at the political level, at the highest political level. But who would give the order Prime Minister. to the pilot? The orders would be issued by my team. Are they trained for that? Absolutely, and they're ready to do that. Wow. Would you be prepared to shoot down a commercial airliner? At the end of the day, we're in the military. This is our job 24-7, 365 days, days a year. So. Um, if that's an order given mm. to us and the correct protocols have been followed, the correct authentication to be given, then yes, we, we can't think about it. It's our job. Uh, it it's an order. Mind. It will when I land. It won't airball. Can you imagine that being your job? That would be. Can you imagine that being your job no, to have to make, not. you know, to have to do that? No. Talk about pressure. Talk about stress. Talk about responsibility. Mm -hmm. Talk about. Very much so. Mm. The typhoons have returned to Coningsby. Another day 
on quick reaction alert. Wow. Just wow. Their mission is over. Their shift isn't. They go back on standby, ready should the alarm go again. Jeez. Mass respect. In 1940, the young men and women of Fighter Command protected Britain's skies against Nazi invasion. Today, 75 years on, Russian aircraft continue to probe NATO's air defences, and the threat of terrorism is as high as it has been for many years. Everyone knows their part in that system. They train for it, they rehearse for it, and so then if an event happens, then they're ready to react. Training kicks in. This is what I've been trained to do. This is what order I've been given. This is my job. Every pilot, engineer, and controller is aware of the part that they play, keeping the country safe, protecting Britain's skies every minute of every day. That was incredible. That was tense. A lot of information there. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not undifferent to how I would expect it to be ran, right? You got to have that there um, mm -hmm. after 9-11. You know, I mean, I hate talking about that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But you do have to be ready 24-7. And as soon as, you know, one goes out, whether it's a drill or anything, you have to be, get the next one in there, get that one ready to go at a minute's notice. It's a thankless job to so many people that do that, that, that put mm -hmm. the uniform on every day, put their lives on the line mm -hmm. and um, have such responsibility um, yes. and to have to live with that every moment and wondering. And to say it's a privilege. It's a privilege exactly. for me to do this. And not just the pilots, every person that's on, the, on the ground crew, whether Absolutely. whatever you're doing. And it's a privilege for us to say again, and I don't care if it annoys some people, <clears throat> thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. And I know that's just a sentence, but it has so much meaning inside our hearts. Please be aware of that. Um, this was fascinating video, tense video, mm -hmm. um, exciting in a way that's you guys should know what I mean when I say exciting. Not that type of exciting, like, yeah, oh, you know. But uh, I am glad we watched this. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button, please, if you're here and you saw this today. And you have the respect for the military that we do as well. I mean, in general, just respecting these men mm -hmm. and women that do this stuff. And, and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, but thank you so much for watching this. Um, this, was, uh, this was cool. It's great to see those that defend. Mm -hmm. um and uh again what what a responsibility and uh what service they provide yeah and just to have that little reminder of things that are going on that <laughs> we're not paying attention to right to protect our everyday lives so we can you know well said run to the gas station to get a box of biscuits petrol station for the biscuits thank you gas station for the cookies <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for watching um again tune in on sunday we won't be here we're not even here now that's the weird thing we're in the future <laughs> the past and the future. Tune in Sunday. We have a great video for you. Um, and uh, we'll uh, talk soon. As always, until the next one, please love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye, guys. Bye.